What is going on guys, Buntai here, and we will be replacing our engine mounts slash transmission mounts in this video. Uh, I'll be walking you guys through a thorough explanation on how to replace it on your 540i. First step, you're going to want to disconnect your battery terminal off of your rear battery, starting with your negative terminal. Undo that with a 10 millimeter bolt and set that off to the side. After that, you're going to want to remove your engine cover. After you remove your engine cover, you're going to want to come over here. You're going to want to remove this uh, strut uh, bracket bar. You're going to want to remove your whole intake uh, off. Next step, to make your life a lot easier, you're going to want to come over here to this uh, strut bar on that the, the shock mount that holds up your hood. And you're going to want to come over here and pry this piece out right here. Where my, where my screwdriver is on and you're going to pry that out and pop off the uh, both sides of your hood and then you're going to want to lift up your hood and it will put it into the service position it will just make it a lot easier so that way you don't have to watch for your head hitting anything things of that nature next step you're going to want to come over here to your intake box you're going to want to remove this in order to remove this, you don't have to take this off, um, but it does make it a lot easier. I believe underneath of here is a 13 or 15 millimeter, and I think this is an E8 or or 16 E16 e maybe. Once you remove all the components related to the intake, you're gonna just double check. You're not gonna want to remove your intake from here. You're gonna want to remove your intake from down here. Uh, it will just give you a little bit extra room, especially with this in the way, um, your resonator box in the way. So after you remove that, you're going to want to put your attention over here to your plastic panelings. Um, there's about six uh, clips that hold this in. They're all plastic clips, um, no screws required. And the same thing for this side, you're going to remove these uh, plastic paneling clips. Now this next step, I can't directly show you guys because I don't have a lift, but underneath the car, there are plastic panelings lining all underneath of here. I believe there's about um, four of them, four individual ones. Uh, you're going to want to remove every last one of those panelings from underneath of your car, uh, only in the front engine bay section. Uh, this is just to give you the most optimal amount of space when you're working on the engine mounts. Next step, you're gonna jack up your car, reasonable height, just enough to get your wheel off, and just enough to where it's a working height for you, as well as you're going to want to take off your inner fender well. They're held on by eight millimeter hex bolts, I believe. Um, there's about 15, 16 of them. Uh, they're aligning all along here. It's not. Um, very difficult to take off, but you just want to make sure you don't crack your plastic um, So you you know avoid buying a new uh, splash guard just for reference This is the back of the car and where my thumb is is the front of the car coming this way A quick side note the only place that I know of currently right now on the B58 is front and center relative to the position of the engine is right here I'm sure that you could take off the intake manifold and use one of the intake manifold bolts to also have another supporting point if you were to try and cherry pick this out. But in this case, we're only going to need to lift up the front of the engine to remove the engine mounts. Once you guys have loosened that up, you're going to come to the top of the engine bay and you're going to want to put on your engine uh, bar make sure when you put on your engine bar it's sitting on the seam of your uh, where your fender meets the uh, chassis of the car next step you're going to see a bolt that is directly on your engine mount you can cross reference some parts or your new part to see exactly where that's at but it's on the top of the engine mount and you're going to want to loosen that screw and just take it all the way out next step you're going to want to come up to the top so referencing back to what i was talking about the number one spot is where the bolt will go in 
there's only one way that you can put in the engine mount so there's no getting it mixed up as well as I corresponded each one of these numbers to where everything goes so three goes to three two goes to two one goes to one that way just in case to clear up any confusion after you have removed the engine bolts you are then able to jack the car up from the underneath and once you jack the car up underneath that will raise the engine uh, approximately one inch to three inches after you raise it up you should be able to sort of jigsaw the engine mounts out of the way in order to um, get the new ones in now the hardest part about this will be the right side or the exhaust side uh, if you don't have a down pipe um, and you have the style catalytic converters then it's going to be significantly harder but not impossible here is paradox sf um, he has a really good youtube channel on how to rebuild his entire 540 he's rebuilt it basically from the ground up i suggest you guys go check out his video but here is where he shows you that the mount is bad um, this is a very key indicative feature because it's fluid filled and once the fluid leaks all out, then it loses all rigidity of the actual mount itself. Here, he shows himself removing the transmission um, pan sort of cover, plastic cover. Uh, this will give you a lot of access to actually get in there from the back, especially if you're on the lift. So here's the part in his video where I believe that he kind of lacked explaining what he did here. When he proceeds to jack up the actual engine, um, he most likely removed the windshield wiper cowl, which is on top. And I think they might even be already out um, based off of what I've seen from his rebuild videos. So that gave him the extra room to not only lift the engine up, but also to get the mounts out in that required amount of space. So if you're trying to jack up your engine from where he's jacking it up and without removing the windshield wiper cowl, it's going to hit on your EVAP line uh, and that's what's going to cause it to stop going up. You might even hear some creaking or cracking. Now that that's established, we can now move on with jacking up the engine. And after we jack up the engine, this will allow us to have enough room in order to jigsaw a puzzle this motor mount out and once it gets out then you can put it in the new motor mount um, with a little bit of finessing and finagling as you can see here like how he did now that it's being put back in you can just move it around a little bit in the hole it only goes one way once you put it in you can just drop it down screw in the bottom three bolts after you screw in the bottom three bolts uh, you can make sure you to torque these down. The torque spec for the one that goes on top is 100 newton meters, and the one that is on the bottom, I believe, is 19 newton meters. If you guys need any help, all of my resources will be down below in the description of the torque specs, and the bolt sizes that I could gather will be down there in the description with all the tools that you will possibly need to uh, complete this job if you guys like this video or appreciated it please make sure to give it a like comment and subscribe as it really helps out the channel and i'll see you guys in the next video